I have a couple cars in the shop today and I'm troubleshooting some electrical problems. You know, wh what else is new on these old cars? One of them is a very difficult problem to troubleshoot and another one just has some problems with power windows, power door locks, and I'm doing some basic electrical diagnosis. Now, when you go after these type of problems, you know, generally you would get a volt ohm meter, maybe you would get a 12 volt test light, and many times you might grab some sort of a 12 volt power source. This is a booster pack with a jumper lead so it gives 12 volts here and you want to test a motor or test a power window regulator mechanism. So the jobs I'm going to show you today can be done with these three tools. But what I want to show you in this video is one tool that will do it all and do it much better. In fact, this is one of my favorite, absolute favorite tools when it comes to some serious electrical troubleshooting and that's the power probe. This is the power probe. I'm sure if some of you've been around automotive maintenance for any length of time, you've already heard about this tool and you've probably already got one because this thing is real handy. Now, the purpose of this video is not to tell you how to use this. I'm not gonna go over all the features. There's just a ton of videos on YouTube and information on the internet about this tool. You can just Google power probe and you'll get all kinds of information on how to use this and the different functions that it has. But today, I'm just gonna show you a few applications of how I use it, and specifically how to use this when troubleshooting some really interesting problems on a power seat. One of the greatest features of the power probe is the amount of wire that comes with it. You have 20 feet of wire here, which allows you to go all around the car and test electrical items. It also allows you to go to a workbench, which you'll watch me do shortly here to test a motor. And it's really easy to hook up. You just take and hook up the red lead to the positive post your battery and the black lead to the negative. Now you've heard me talk about troubleshooting before. You always wanna make sure that you have a fully charged battery or at least over 12 volts before you start doing any electrical troubleshooting if you're using the car's battery. What's nice about the power probe is I can hook it up like this. Notice I love the lights. And I can just push forward on the rocker switch. It tells me right away I have 12.7 volts in the battery. Now with this cable, I'm gonna go over the workbench and show you how I test an electrical motor. I have a W126, I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with the power door locks. Well, first thing you wanna do is test the motor. And you do that with a power probe by going in and touching the contacts. Let's see, I'm gonna to touch this contact and then I'm gonna to touch the other one that powers the motor. And then I'm gonna push forward on the rocker switch. Okay, you can hear the motor running. I'm going to reverse direction by swapping the leads, push forward and I can hear the motor running the other direction. Now what I can do is I can hook up a vacuum gauge and see if this is properly sucking and blowing, which I will do later on today. But for now, I just wanted to show you how you can remotely test an electrical motor using this extra grounding lead that's located close by the power probe. On the 300 SD, I also have a power window that's not working. Now I removed the door panel to do some other work inside the door. You don't have to remove the door panel for this test, but what I want to do before I worry about switches or anything else, I want to make sure the motor is running all the way up and down and powering this window. And I can do this with a power probe. Now keep in mind, this car is located on the other side of the shop, about 15 feet away from the battery in the other car. And I can just bring this over without lugging any other tools. And we can test to see if this motor is running. Now I'm going to locate the two wires going to the motor, they're green and black. And the way this works is you power one way, the window goes up, you flip polarity and you power the other way and the window goes down. So I'm gonna hook the ground to this one, doesn't matter which one, then I'll put my probe into the other contact. Now I'm gonna push forward and power it, see that? Window comes all the way up. Now I'm gonna disconnect it, hook the ground on that side come in here and probe and power it all the way down. So right away, I know my motor's good. I've got to start looking elsewhere. Now let's go over to this other car that's got this memory power seat problem. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Anytime you're troubleshooting an electrical component, it's not working. Look at the fuse box. 
But in this case, you need to do more than just look. You need to test, and this is where the power probe comes in. Watch as I'm going to test the fuse and the circuit for the memory seat on the driver's side. Now, I will get the chart here in the fuse box lid, and right away I see that the driver's seat with a memory is fuse E. Fuse E is located right here. I don't have to push any button. I'm just seeing if there's power here. No power. And you think, oh, it's not working. Well, you have to understand how the system works. You're not going to have any power to this fuse until you open the door. Remember, you open the door and then you can adjust your power seat. So I'm going to open the door. And let's test the power inlet to the fuse. That's at the bottom there. Watch as I reach down with the probe and touch. Okay, 12.6 volts. And even though the fuse looks good, I can come up and touch this top contact point and I'm getting 12.6 volts. So with this test, I know I don't have any problem with the fuse as it's related to this memory power seat. So I've been messing around with a switch and no amount of movement on any of these contacts, pushing the buttons, moving the levers back and forth is causing the seat to move. It's totally frozen. This is really frustrating because how am I going to get the seat out if I can't move it fore and aft? Well, you might be able to power it from these contacts here, but you need to be really careful. You need to do a little research and find out which one of these wires powers the seat. If you start applying power to the wrong wire, you could burn out a component. So I'm just warning you to be careful, okay? Now I'm going to unplug these plugs. Notice there's only two plugs. A lot of these power seats have three or four plugs. So that kind of gives you a warning right away. The other thing that gives you a warning here is look at how small all these wires are in gauge. These are very small gauge wires, which leads me to believe these are probably all ground circuits, okay? So I'm not gonna apply power here, but I am going to apply ground. It looks like the center contact is probably ground. Let's check. Yep, it's showing it's a ground. Now I'm gonna connect the small ones and I'm gonna rock the switch back to ground them, okay? Nothing there. Nothing there. Let's take this one. I'm not getting any movement in the seat at all. Nothing. Nothing. Now, of course, if you have another switch, you can try another switch, but I suspect this is not a switch problem. There's a possibility, you know, you could have broken wires at the door hinge, but I doubt whether all of them would be broken. So I think something else is going on. We're going to have to pull the seat and get to the wiring at the memory module now to do any further troubleshooting. I was able to get the seat unbolted from the frame and get it tipped back. Now that was not easy, but we won't go over that in this video. And here you can see the memory seat module right here, the little black box, okay? As I look at this, you can just kind of study it with me. You see a number of plugs coming out of the back of the module, and these go to the seat motors. So you got one, two, three, four, five plugs there. I've got three plugs up front. One of them has all those colored small wires coming from the switch, and here you can see these two red wires and brown wire. Look at how big these wires are. So it's pretty obvious that this is going to be our power plug. Let's unplug this and see, all right? We can use the power probe. Now, I don't know there's a brown there, which is usually ground, and I don't know which one of these three that goes to. So the power probe can actually tell us that. Watch. Okay, that one is power, 12.4 volts. Oh, that's the ground. And that kind of fools me because I would have thought this would have gone over there. Let's check this one. Power, 12.4 volts. So I have power to the module and I have a working ground from the module. So that's not the problem. If the power were breaking down somewhere en route to this module, either through a relay or a fuse, you know, I wouldn't have any power here. So if I unplug this one,
these are the six wires going up to the switch and I've already taken and grounded these directly and I'm not getting any movement in the box. So this leads me to believe that I'm going to have to replace this module. In the meantime, I need to get this seat working. So I'm going to show you how I can do that using the power probe. I'm going to take one of the plugs out of the back here. I don't know which motor this goes to, but we'll find out. Okay, now let's take a look at it. All right, you've got two large pins and three small pins, so we know the large pins, probably the leads going to the motor. If I power it one direction, the seat will move one way, and if I power it the other direction, the seat should move another way. Once again, I don't know if this is tilt or fore and aft. So just like I did with that power window regulator, I'm going to hook the ground to one of these pins, and then I'm going to power this with the power probe. Look at that. Ha! I got the fore and aft. Now if I want to take the seat out, now I can get to the bolts on the track assembly. I'll take and reverse this back and look, I'm going to power the seat the other way. Okay, so now you can see how you can use a power probe to move a power seat as long as the motor is working. If you can get underneath it and you can get to the plugs. Now, I'm going to go ahead and order in a new module. In the meantime, I'm going to take all these plugs off the module and I'm going to shove them down here on the floor, tie them off to the back of the seat, and I will be able to adjust the seat when I want to drive the car now until the new module comes using the power probe that you see here. So I've just shown you a few examples of how this amazing tool can be used to solve a number of different electrical problems.